And hello again. And today we're going to have a look at the uh, Arturio Mini Lab 3, which is the latest uh, Mini Lab. And specifically, this isn't going to be a normal video. I'm not just going to try and show you um, what it currently does, because there's any number of videos out there already that will show you that. I'm going to focus on um, plugins. And specifically, as I did with the Innovation FL key, um, external plugins and whether we can do something similar with the uh, Mini Lab. Um, so, if you do want to have a look at the Mini Lab, this is the um, Arturia page all about the Mini Lab. And I'll let you look at that. I'll put the link underneath. Uh, it's a nice keyboard. And my blog is here. And for the FL key, you've currently got a whole shed load of third party plugins. I just thought I'd quickly run through these. Um, starting off really with uh, Xenology. Um, they're all based on Xenology, um, in so much as the knob to go in order of cutoff, resonance, attack, release, um, vibrato. Well, I know that says unison detune, but that's unusual actually to see a Xenology that doesn't say vibrato there. Um, but specifically for this soft synth, I guess that was the relevant vibrato method, and that's um, offsetting the detuning of uh, two oscillators, I guess, um, and running it as a monophonic, which I guess this one is. I've started to, I've started to blabber already, haven't I? Anyway, um, let's go through. I put a couple on more on this morning, which um, get to in a minute. Oh, I put these on the other day, which is the Alturia um, augmented piano voices and strings. This morning I put on the Promars and the Sound Canvas. Uh, anyway, let's close that down and let's get stuck in. So on FL Studio, I've loaded up um, some internal plugins and I'll switch over to the mini lab here because you've got some control. You can see the Flex, Toxic Biohazard, Fruity DX10. Now these are ones, all the FL Studio plugins are supported as are a lot of the Arturio plugins. Um, the latest ones, not the earlier ones, which I've got. I've got version 7 of the collection. That's not supported out of the box because the version numbering is slightly different and it doesn't pick them up. Um, I'll probably look at, be looking at getting version 9 um, soon um, when I see it at a good price, perhaps uh, next month. It's November next month. Um, and Xenology, uh, which is the one that I've added just really as a proof of concept say uh, can it be done i kind of knew it could be because i had a look at the code but i thought it'd be quite good to demonstrate it now um arturia have taken a slightly different approach to scripting than uh, narration have but horses for courses you know um arturia have uh, wanted to um, bring out some new features for their hardware uh, differentiate it from other keyboards as you might imagine one of the things they've done Apart from having compared to the um, Novation FL Key Mini, there is a very small screen here, which I'm just pointing out. You won't be able to see it, but it gives you basically the same information as you'll see coming up on the uh, screen for FL Studio in the, the strip, which let me just open that up to um, show you the full hint bar. So it'll come up down here. So basically, um, more or less what will come up on the small screen on the mini lab is going to appear down here and also up here. So I can click through these and I can pick them out. So if I want to load up Plex, I just press the key. If I want to go down to Toxic Biohazard, it might stop working. Why is that? What's going on there? That's not supposed to happen. Right, it triggers off um, focus, but up until before I'd run this, it was actually working really well. So there's Flex. Let's close that. It doesn't seem to like to move on. Am I losing focus? Let's try it the other way around. That's Analogy. PTDX10. Toxic Biohazard. Flex. OK, so maybe it was because I was actually clicking them off instead of allowing the script to do that for me. Anyway, 
Okay, again, look, that's interesting. That's probably because I did the same thing. So straight away, that I, I, I like the concept of this, but um, the reality is uh, I probably won't. I mean, I certainly won't use it if it's behaving like this. And this is Sod's Law. Um, it does work actually fine. Um, so you can load up. You can load that stuff in the browser and I'm not going to go into all that because that's covered by other videos. I want to focus on the um, third party plugins. So you've got the support for, for these already on the knobs and I'll quickly flick through. You've got cutoff, resonance, the mix between color and modulation. One look a bit there. Um, and another mix there between color and modulation on Reba. Um, volume envelope. Volume decay, um, sustain, and release, and then they think they've done the, the first four of these macro functions as well. And so, I think the key is they've probably taken advice from Image Line. I don't know if that's true or not, but basically they've thought, well, you know, what are the best parameters we can give you in Plex, and that's what they've tried to do. Can you change them? Yes, you can. Uh, it's not very really straightforward and you need to know scripting to do that but it's quite a useful starting point um and let's go to and i'm just going to focus it again because that seems to be what's happening i'm losing focus possibly because i've got the mixer on screen i don't know um similar for toxic biohazard you load it up it's cut off resonance which are the, always the first two they're a great two to have ben what's that one guide anyway um, I'm really just illustrating that uh, these are all connected and as you switch between them, whether you use the keyboard or whether you use the mouse, which I'm doing now to go to the X10, um, you're going to get the same kind of functionality and the same kind of control. So that's great. That's just what you want. You know, that's quite nice, isn't it? Let's um, look at the modulation envelope. Hmm. Um, so let's go back and let's load up. This is the one that isn't supported, and this is the one that I've added. And I started with Synology because uh, that's where I really I got the idea from for doing um, standardizing the buttons. So you will start off with cut off here, resonance, attack, release, uh, vibrato, um, and then effects. The next two are normally effects, and you'll see if you look on the screen, I've got the chorus level there. And the reverb level and then the last one is the overall level um, and you'll see I've also got some others which are on these buttons uh, I haven't chosen these I need to spend more time choosing these in all honesty um, the, but this is just a proof of concept to, so, to show you that it's working and of course I can go back and I can click between them and you know this is quite nice when it works and I've lost focus I guess there stupid what, what i should be doing is perhaps selecting them and then flicking off selecting that one flicking off which closes it down selecting the analogy flicking off going somewhere else clicking it flicking off okay so that's the gist of how it works um i am talking to the developers at arturia and i'm really hoping that they're going to standardize in as far as possible a methodology for adding the um, the CC numbers from different uh, plugins because as you saw earlier on I've already done a lot of work for the um, Novation FL key series of keyboards and I want to really bring that up and drop it and have it work on the mini lab and at the moment um, the scripting is essentially the same in terms of functionality but the the way it's done the methodology is different so um, we're working on that. There's various different options. Uh, but what's nice is Arturia, or the guy from Arturia I've spoken to, has agreed in principle um, to do something to help us with that, to make it a little bit easier for us to be able to add instruments. Um, when I say us, definitely if you're a programmer, like me, I, I spent most of my life programming. Um, and with a bit more work, hopefully, just as a normal end user as well. Um, but that's probably a little bit further down the line without getting um, embroiled in the complexities of uh, CC numbers and MIDI and, um, and uh, scripting. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you today. Um, 
I probably will do a comparison between the Mini Lab 3 and the FL Key Mini and the FL Key 37, which I've got. Uh, but today I just wanted to focus on the potential for using third party plugins. Um, and yes, the potential is definitely there. A bit more work to do. I don't want to duplicate all the work I've done and do like a, what we used to call a print and rekey, <laughs> which is always a, never a good thing to do. Um, what I want to do is uh, drag and drop effectively or something similar all the resources from the um, FL key series of keyboards for external keyboards across to the Mini Lab 3 and uh, hopefully other Arturia keyboards as well, which are for coming down the line. We're going to support this kind of functionality and we'll get them into those as well. Um, there is a discussion going on, which I've hinted at. I'm not going to go into detail now, but there are various options um, that we can look at for making that simpler. And I'm really hoping that the guys at ImageLine, Novation and Arturia are going to be on board and help us with that. Um, obviously, that I accept that their focus is their individual projects and differentiating their products. Um, but um, I'm still hopeful. Um, so far, so good. They've I mean, I've spoken to Innovation, I've spoken to Imisline, I've spoken to Arturia. Great guys. Um, that, you know, they've got some great products and they've got some great guys behind the scenes doing the scripting. So um, I'm hoping that it will come together for the benefit of all of us um, at some point in the future. Anyway, thanks for listening. Certainly if you got this far, I'm sure you've probably given up. Um, I'll just turn around and put my hand on the mouse so that I can stop recording. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.